I hope you are learning more about language and how it affects, it can enhance or create some challenges with creating uh, messages that are understood by our receivers. Uh, in the last video, we did talk about troublesome language. And so all of those concepts, when you learn and recognize what you do, you can work on improving all of those areas. So anything from um, under that last video in that last category, you can adjust that and try to become more aware of when you use that type of language or how you use it. And those would be small tools that you could put into your tool belt to improve your communication and the chances of successfully communicating. But in this video, we're going to look at avoiding abstractions, how to use I language, and I'm going to teach you how to create what we call clear messages. This is something that we talk about in the interpersonal communication class. It's normally not part of this class, so you uh, are not going to find this last item in your textbook. So let's dive into uh, formulating the right perspective on how are you going to uh, work on our language use. The ultimate goal for um, our, it, communicating is to maintain or improve relationships. And so our goal is set in that context of relationships. We want it to, our relationships to continue. And so the best way to do that is to have the right perspective or the right attitude when we are communicating, especially when we have difficult topics to discuss with others. And so here's sort of your checklist. We want to avoid abstractions. We'll talk about that on the next slide. We want to make sure that we are describing our own feelings or our thoughts. We don't want to evaluate other people. We're going to learn about I and you language in the next, after a couple of slides here. We want to focus in on solving the problem instead of controlling others or blaming others. We want to be genuine because we're trying to maintain or improve the relationship. We don't want to be manipulative. We want to try to empathize, show understanding that you're trying to understand their perspective, right? Rather than being detached, we want that connection with that other person. We want to be flexible and not rigid. We want to present ourselves as equal to, not superior or better than the other person. We also want to avoid gunny sacking, which is what we would um, call dredging up the past, uh, because that is not um, effective. <laughs> All right, so let's check out abstractions. You were bri briefly uh, introduced to this in the last slide or earlier in your chapter. When we have a high abstraction, that means it's vague. It's not specific, it's unclear, difficult to understand. Low abstractions are less vague. They are more specific, concrete. So we want low level abstractions or being more specific, okay? We also want to make sure that we remain calm and respectful. We don't want to be too blunt and harsh. And that's very easy to do with friends and family. It doesn't mean that it's acceptable. A lot of times people are hurt by that because we're comfortable in that relationship. They might not tell you that, but we do want to be careful of that. So high level abstractions are vague. Low level abstractions are specific. In this ladder that you see here on the right is actually in your textbook. If somebody says to you, you're useless, that is a high abstraction. It is very vague. What does that mean? We don't have any clue. That is not a good, clear message. That is not understandable. We don't even know the context. So if you were to say something like that, it is not effective. Okay. When you come at somebody with the you language, you see that several times here in this ladder, the other person is more likely to be defensive. 
So it's a good idea to try not to start your sentences with the word you because it sounds accusatory. It sounds like you're confronting them. There are softer approaches to confrontation, like our perception check. So we want to work on not starting our sentences with the word you. That is a great skill right there to use. If we look at this context, you're useless, which we don't have a context, if we worded that a little bit differently, maybe you would say you never help out around the house. Well, that is more specific. So it would be um, a, a lower abstraction, but it is still not very clear. I don't know specifically what you're talking about. Now we're getting down to, oh, it's about your chores. Well, that is more specific than just the general not helping around the house. But look, we could even be more specific. It's really all about the trash. And my thought is, why don't we start start there? Why are we waiting? <laughs> why don't we just be more effective from the beginning? The trash wasn't emptied last night, and it's your job to do that. That's a pretty clear statement. Okay. So one of the things we want to work on is trying to incorporate the I language here. We want to start our sentences with I. I think, I feel, I've noticed... Take responsibility for your thoughts and feelings and then make your observation about the behavior or what it or, or what they said. It's easier for them to hear the message instead of you forget to do this or you don't do that. It's easier for them to hear your message when you start out with the I. So that's another great skill. Right, So try to eliminate the you as starting point for your sentences. Now try to replace that with the I language. That would be fabulous. And then try to be more specific. Another thing I want to caution you about while we're on this slide is this word right here, never or always. Those are trigger words. And usually it gets people off track onto another subject. You never help out around the house. The chances are they're going to argue back with you the one time they did, and that defeats the point of your message. And so it is not effective. It distracts from the ultimate context, context and the content that you're trying to communicate. So we have several things that we can learn from abstractions just on this one slide. So there are several goals for yourself to put in your tool belt. Let's look more specifically at that I language. I have this chart here for um, examples of what something might sound like, something that you might actually say that tends to be hurtful. Even if it doesn't start with the word you, it still could come across as a more hurtful message. So they give you several here on the left in this column, and then they give you a, an alternative way to say it on the right. And I don't want you to be somebody that you're not. You can take these concepts and figure out what's the best way for me, <coughs> excuse me, and my personality, because we want you to be genuine. So don't try to fake it. Don't try to be somebody you're not, but use these as an examples of how can we be less hurtful. <coughs> so when we are using our I language, we really are taking responsibility for our thoughts, our feelings. You want to use these phrases. I think, I feel, I see, I saw, I noticed, I'm assuming. Those are great ways to start out your sentences. Make sure that you're focusing in on the behavior and not the actual person. We don't want to be attacking character with our messages. I also give you an example here of um, I don't appreciate is very neg negative connotation. Uh, and if you restate that as a please and then request the behavior, that is a more powerful and a cl more clear message. So you might want to try that. Mary uh, Cassian is an author, and she suggests that I language would decrease the chance that you're going to come across as judgmental or combative in your speech and increases the other person's receptiveness to your message. If we start out harsh, if we start out negative, they are less likely to hear you. 
and then your message isn't, isn't effective. So we want to try to be more appropriate and effective. That's part of our goal. And so let's look at how to create an, uh, an I message, a full I uh, clear message. An iMessage has some very similar components that you're going to recognize back from our perception check. But perception checking was all about trying to figure out what somebody else was doing or what they said and trying to clarify their actions or their messages. An I statement or a clear message is really all about you trying to communicate a message so they have better understanding. And so the purpose is different, even though you'll see some over overlap and some similarities. And a you a language message might say something like, well, you don't care about my feelings. I still don't know what that means. It's very abstract. I don't have a context in this. Uh, message and then I might get defensive in response to that. So let's look at a different way to look at that. We want to try to pinpoint the other person's behavior like we did in the perception check. We want to offer an interpretation of their behavior. We want to include our feelings regarding the situation and possibly identify the consequences that their behavior has for you. Now in actuality, you don't have to have all four components. You might leave out an interpretation, but it is going to help you create a more clear message and they will understand you better as a result. So instead of, you don't care about my feelings, I, I'm going to give you this other example. I saw you in the coffee shop with your old girlfriend when you told me you had to work. I thought you lied to me about where you were going. I am really hurt and confused by this, and I am not sure where our relationship stands. That is a completely different message than you don't care about my feelings. We focus on the behavior, right? And what our thoughts were about that, were the interpretation was that the other person lied, and you're expressing your feelings. Now, I have to admit, this does sound a little bit maybe robotic, and it might not sound like you. And that's okay. We want you to create messages that sound like you. But this just gives you the idea of how it's laid out. Another example might be those dirty clothes that somebody leaves on the floor in your in your house or your apartment, your, your roommates or your other family members. And you can say, you never pick up your dirty clothes off the floor. And their response will be what? Oh, yes, I do. I did it last week. And they're going to focus in on that one time. But instead of doing that, why not say something in an iMessage format? Hey, Maria, when you leave your dirty clothes on the floor and I have to bend over and pick it up, it really aggravates my back problems and I actually experience pain. I'm really frustrated when I want to try to keep our house clean and I feel like I need to pick up after you. It really would be great if you could help out by picking those up for me. I'd sure appreciate the help. Now, I just made that up off the top of my head, but I focused in on picking up their dirty clothes. I focused in on how it feels to me. I, I explained why it's a problem for me. It creates back pain. And if Maria and I are roommates or family members, hopefully we care for one another and she wouldn't want me to experience pain. So play around with this a little bit. It takes some effort. It, it doesn't have to be exactly all these four steps or in this particular order, but anytime you make any of these improvements, be more specific. Use I instead of you. Focus in on the behavior and not their character, or you focus in on giving an interpretation, right? Explaining your feelings or the consequences. Each one of these can make your message more clear and more understandable. And so all of these components are even smaller tools within this bigger tool. Uh, so I hope that these will give you um, more ideas and suggestions on how to be more clear and how to create messages that are more easily heard by another person. I have final tips 
on working on those encoding, putting together the messages before you send them, and tips on decoding. And on this very last slide, I have um, a video clip, uh, four magic phrases to respond to just about anything. Um, and I think they're great. It's very short. And so you can choose to listen to that video uh, and pick up some of those phrases and add those to your tool belt as well. So good luck with improving your verbal communication skills. It's a lot of work. Don't beat yourself up. It takes time and effort and practice, and you'll improve over time. Just focus on a few at a time, and you will start improving your verbal communication.